Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shara Aqeel. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadibiya Palace a number of the royal family members and state officials. He stressed that the challenges that face the region require further coordination on all levels and added that consultation among the region states on the levels of politics, security and economy have become a necessity. The Premier reviewed with the attendees a number of topics concerning local affairs. He praised the qualities of the Bahaini society, adding that they have reinforced the strength of the community in the face of all challenges. He expressed pride in the citizens' sense of responsibility, which has foiled all attempts targeting the security of the kingdom. His Royal Highness also reviewed with the attendees a number of issues regarding the Gulf, where he commended the development of the GCC countries, which have become a global destination for tourism and investment.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Dhabi Palace the Qatari ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed Al Thani, upon the end of his diplomatic career as ambassador of his country and the kingdom. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the deep-rooted Bahraini-Qatari relations and the development it witnessed in various fields. The Prime Minister expressed his fulfillment with the course of the Bahraini-Qatari relations and its development, as well as its effect on the level of bilateral cooperation between the two countries. His Royal Highness also expressed pleasure for meeting with Sheikh Jassim on the sidelines of the Gulf Cooperation Council GCC Summit. He also stated the importance of such meetings to support joint cooperation. The Prime Minister praised the efforts of the Qatari Ambassador in reinforcing the relations between the two countries and supporting bilateral cooperation in various fields. His Royal Highness asked Sheikh Jassim to convey his greetings to the Emir of Qatar and the Prime Minister and Interior Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Nasser Al Thani and wish Qatar further progress and prosperity. The Qatari Ambassador expressed pride in the Prime Minister's keenness on supporting the Bahraini Qatar relations and broadening the horizons of the cooperation and coordination between the two countries in various fields. He also praised the support he, he received from His Royal Highness throughout his tenure in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at the Palace the President of the Bahrain Basketball Association, the BBA, Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, who introduced His Royal Highness the President of the Arabic and Emirate Basketball Association, Ismail Al Qarqawi. During the meeting, His Royal Highness affirmed sports' role in spreading noble human values, adding that it should be employed to redirect energies towards development and intercultural coexistence. The Prime Minister noted the BBA's efforts in managing and developing basketball and wished the association and its affiliates further success and progress and also expressed desire to strengthen the cooperation and coordination between the BBA and the Arabic Basketball Association, which reflects positively on developing the game in the Kingdom. He also highlighted that this cooperation will reinforce the advanced levels Bahrain sports has reached related to basketball. The President of the Arab Basketball Association expressed thanks and gratitude to His Royal Highness for the reception and praised the development of basketball in Bahrain. He also affirmed the Association's keenness on developing cooperation with Bahrain. He then presented His Royal Highness with Arab Basketball Association trophy. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met today His Highness the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, the Deputy Supreme Commander of the United Arab Emirates Armed Forces, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan in the Shatat Palace. The meeting took place on the sidelines of His Royal Highness's visit to Abu Dhabi to participate in the Fikr 15 conference, which is organized by the Arab Thought Foundation and titled Arab Integration, the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf and the United Arab Emirates. During the meeting, His Royal Highness emphasized the strong and long-standing bilateral ties between Bahrain and the UAE, which received the full support of His Majesty King Hamad and His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the UAE. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of further expanding bilateral ties to reflect the two countries' commitment to the relationship. He also highlighted the integral role the UAE plays in supporting efforts to further promote GCC integration in order to achieve wider Arab integration and capitalize on opportunities that facilitate greater development across all sectors. His Royal Highness conveyed His Majesty King Hamad's regards to the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, extending his best wishes for the UAE of further development and prosperity. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan welcomed His Royal Highness's visit to Abu Dhabi, stressing the strong and deep-rooted bilateral ties that exist between both countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met today the President of the Arab Thought Foundation, His Royal Highness Prince Khalid Al Faisal in Abu Dhabi. The meeting took place following the Crown Prince's participation at the 15th Fikr Conference in Abu Dhabi on Arab Integration, the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf, the GCC and the United Arab Emirates, UAE, and is being held under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the President of the United Arab Emirates. 
During the meet, the Crown Prince highlighted that traditional culture and intellectual history work to enrich people's knowledge and serve as vital tools, tools rather, for advancing regional development and prosperity. The Crown Prince then emphasized the key role the Arab Thought Foundation plays in facilitating dialogue among distinguished Arab thinkers on ways to improve regional integration. The Crown Prince went on to praise His Royal Highness Prince Khalid for his work in supporting Arab thinkers and driving initiatives that focus on Arab cultural enrichment and creativity. The Crown Prince concluded by stressing the importance of continuing to introduce meaningful steps that support regional development goals and which facilitate innovative opportunities across the region. His Royal Highness Prince Khalid expressed his appreciation to the Crown Prince for participating at the 15th Fikr Conference in Abu Dhabi and delivering an address during a panel session on the role of the GCC. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa participated today in a plenary, rather plenary session as part of the Fikr 15th Conference, which is organized by the Arab Thought Foundation in partnership with the Arab League. The conference is entitled Arab Integration, the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf, the GCC, and the United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi. During the session, His Royal Highness stressed that the achievements of the GCC are a source of honor and pride, highlighting that stronger ambitions will drive the GCC countries to achieve more. His Royal Highness further stressed that further integration must be achieved to strengthen the GCC's ability to work as a unified bloc and build on its international influence. His Royal Highness highlighted that this ambition will be achieved as GCC nations work at an accelerated pace, particularly in light of global challenges. The Crown Prince welcomed the vision of the GCC leaders in institutionalizing economic cooperation in order to coordinate the development of legislation and regulations that stimulate business activity and diversify economies. The Crown Prince then stressed the importance of linking these efforts with practical steps to ensure the GCC's long-term goals are met. As part of this, His Royal Highness said GCC infrastructure must continue to be developed, which will boost productivity, support sustainable economic development, and benefit future generations. In this regard, His Royal Highness noted the GCC-wide commitment to continued infrastructure investment, adding that the GCC railway project GCC Water Link Project and Renewable Energy Investments are among projects the region will benefit from. His Royal Highness added that the private sector financed the new King Hamad Causeway that will provide a second road link between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and will be an integral addition to GCC infrastructure that will attract regional and international companies. His Royal Highness addressed the priorities that the GCC should focus on in the next phase of development in order to build on its achievements. The Crown Prince stressed that the long-term success of the GCC will be built upon modern and a comprehensive education for the region's young people and by following them, rather allowing them to innovate, pursue entrepreneurship and other opportunities. The Crown Prince highlighted the services that have been delivered for Gulf citizens since the reception, uh, rather the inception of the GCC, including improved ease of travel through the provision of ID cards as well as increased ease of doing business, which has resulted in GCC citizens owing over, rather owning over 40,000 CRs and own real estate in other GCC countries. The resolutions and decisions issued at previous, previous GCC summits have also facilitated new medical treatments for hundreds of thousands of GCC nationals, and the alignment of medical policies has lowered the cost of medication. In regards to infrastructure, the integration of electrical and water networks has provided greater electrical capacity and created a solid base for the GCC water link project to build on. His Royal Highness also spoke about defense cooperation and highlighted that the GCC joint defense system has played a crucial role in guaranteeing the security of the GCC. The Crown Prince noted the security challenges GCC countries face, adding that these require strengthening GCC defense cooperation across all sectors including the establishment of defensive cover against ballistic missiles. In this regard, His Royal Highness added that the GCC was founded in 1981 at a turbulent time, adding that it has enabled the region to overcome numerous challenges and avoid regional turmoil. 
His Royal Highness emphasized that some of the most important achievements made by the GCC relate to economic and trade cooperation. His Royal Highness noted that the GCC efforts have ensured greater shared prosperity and led to initiatives such as the joint Gulf market and the unification of reduction of custom fees, which increased trade from 15 billion US dollars in 2002 to 115 billion in 2015. The Crown Prince noted that GCC countries have the potential to become even more influential as an economic bloc. With regards to Bahrain's economy, His Royal Highness added that even in light of the challenges faced by the Kingdom in 2011, Bahrain was capable of continuing to achieve positive economic growth. His Royal Highness highlighted that the Kingdom's programs and initiatives that are being pursued are in line with Bahrain's economic vision 2030 and will be built upon past successes. For example, there has been an increase in average household income of Bahraini families by 47 percent since 2008. His Royal Highness highlighted that today's presentation only confirms the GCC's success as an organization as it has maintained cohesion whilst addressing a myriad of changes and complex challenges. His Royal Highness further highlighted that GCC states have made significant progress towards becoming a fully integrated union through the building of strong joint institutional links and developing applicable legislations. In this regard, His Royal Highness added that the GCC Union should swiftly commence as soon as these legislations have been approved, moving it from a vision to a tangible reality and benefiting citizens across the Gulf. On this note, His Royal Highness stressed the importance of ensuring the GCC Union continues to uphold Arab identity and values, which transcend all segments and differences. His Royal Highness further stressed the importance of protecting religion from those who wish to distort its tolerance and moderation for political gain or into terrorist extremist ideologies. His Royal Highness moved on to address the significant role GCC diplomacy has played in delivering resolutions that have had a positive impact on the GCC and the wider region. The Crown Prince noted that all GCC countries maintain a positive influence among the international community, specifically citing the major impact joint GCC diplomacy has held on the overall image of the GCC bloc. In this regard, His Royal Highness recalled the joint GCC statement at the conclusion of the Camp David Summit, a meeting requested by the U.S. administration in order to discuss the Iranian nuclear agreement. With regards to the strong ties between the GCC and international powers, the plenary session reviewed the GCC-UK summit, which was held in Manama and attended by the British Prime Minister Theresa May. His Royal Highness specifically noted the British Prime Minister's confirmation of the UK's commitment to further improve strong bilateral political, economic and security ties with its allies in the region, adding that the security of the Arabian Gulf is linked to Britain's security. In this regard, His Royal Highness noted the strong and growing ties between the UK and Bahrain, citing that 2016 celebrated 200 years of bilateral relations. Addressing GCC-US ties, and President-elect Donald Trump, His Royal Highness expressed his hope that the new administration would work to build on current GCC U.S. strategic achievements. In this regard, His Royal Highness stressed the importance of further developing positive and constructive ties that would benefit the U.S. and GCC countries. Also during the plenary session, His Royal Highness touched on the deep history of the GCC countries, which started as a new idea and grew into a strong, robust bloc through strong commitment by its leadership. His Royal Highness noted that the announcement of the establishment of the GCC in Abu Dhabi summit in 1981 came about as a result of the common characteristics between the countries in terms of language, religion, family ties, and geographic location. The Deputy Prime Minister and President of the Supreme Council of Education and Training, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, inaugurated today a new building for science and technology in Bahrain beyond school. Present were the Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Hassalah, a number of ministers, senior officials, Chairman of the School Board, Dr. Sheikh Amel Atebi, and a number of board members. The Deputy Premier toured the building, which was equipped with high-level robots and science laboratories. He held the development of Bayan School over the past years, since its establishment in 1982, 
as a school that teaches courses in both Arabic and English languages to its students, which resulted in its winning the Best School for Teaching Arabic and English Award in the International Education Conference in Dubai. He also praised the level of education in Bahrain and stressed the government's keenness in supporting it, stating that education is one of the major pillars of development. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, praised Bayan School's efforts in developing its facilities as to benefit its students, adding that the Ministry of Education urges all schools to provide the students with the highest levels of education in order to prepare them for the future. The chairman of the school board expressed joy in inaugurating the building, which is the first of its kind among private schools in Bahrain commending the efforts of all school board members and faculty in establishing such a building that meets international academic standards. She added that the building will offer applied and theoretical curriculum to students in order to develop their innovation and creativity. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity, Work and Youth Affairs, the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa has been granted the Social Media Pioneer Award during the Arab Social Media Influencer Summit, ASMIS, which was held in the United Arab Emirates, Dubai. His Highness Sheikh Nasser has been presented the award by UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Governor of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, in the presence of Dubai's Crown Prince,
His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Minister of Interior, His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Highness Sheikh Nasser is active on the Arab and international levels in social networks and has been an influential contributor to inspiring youth to serve their countries and promote youth and sports movements. On the occasion, His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid for launching the award, which confirms his support to youth in dealing with the various social media networks, which has become the mode of communication in the world. His Highness Sheikh Nasser confirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, pays great attention to the development of information and communication technologies, which has positioned it in the forefront of countries in this regard. Running from the 13th to the 14th of December this year, ASMIS lineup will bring together leading Arab and international social media influencers. Organized by the Dubai Press Club, these sessions will highlight the importance of ASMIS as an effective platform of using social network platforms in the service of the society. This year's edition includes various styles of sessions, one of which is Dada Chat, which are 15-minute sessions hosting prominent Arab and international social media influencers from various sectors. Under the patronage and presence of the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Honorary President of the Bahrain Disabled Sports Federation, the BDSF, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the National Day Festival organized by the BDSF for people with disabilities from December 9th to 12th has concluded. The festival comes as part of the National Day celebrations on December 16th and the anniversary of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's accession to the throne on December 17th. His Highness watched the activities of the festival with the attendance of the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Hisham bin Mohammed Al Jodar, Bahrain Olympic Committee Secretary General Abdul Rahman Sadiq Askar, the President of the BDSF, Sheikh Mohammed bin Daij Al Khalifa, and several members of the Federation. He affirmed his continued support to Bahrain's youth, especially people with disabilities, to create the ideal atmosphere for them to unleash their talents, which will help them achieve their goals and aspirations. He expressed his appreciation for the efforts of Sheikh Mohammed bin Daij and all BDSF members in organizing programs and activities aimed to integrate people with disabilities in the Kingdom's National Day celebrations. His Highness stressed that the festival gives people with disabilities the opportunity to showcase their sports abilities, which contributes to the development of this game. Sheikh Khalid wished the Bahrain wheelchair basketball team success in their upcoming participation and the GCC Championship hosted by the United Arab Emirates. He crowned the first place winners and wished the best success in upcoming participations.
The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, chaired today the weekly meeting. The meeting discussed a letter from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, regarding a draft law on approving a protocol between Bahrain and Turkey's governments regarding air services. The Council approved the proposal on amending the Office of Financial and Administrative Control Laws. They also approved a report regarding the annual Office of Financial and Administrative Control report. They approved issuing a statement on the occasion of the National Day holiday and his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's accession to the throne. The Council also approved issuing a statement on the unfortunate situation in Aleppo and called to provide them with help and aid they need. The Minister of Interior, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended today the ceremony organized by the Ministry on the occasion of the International Anti Corruption Day in the presence of the Minister of Education, the Prosecutor, the Deputy Interior Minister, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, the Minister of Information Affairs, the Deputy Speaker of the Shura Council, the Deputy Speaker of the Representatives Council, the Under Secretary for Nationality, Passports and Residence at the Ministry of Interior, the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, the Public Security Chief, the Ministry of Interior Under Secretary, and a number of officials in the Kingdom. On this occasion, the Interior Minister stated that the Kingdom is keen on its celebrating this day annually on the sidelines of its efforts to enhance integrity and combat corruption based on the Constitution and His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's reform project. He noted that combating corruption and preserving public money requires concerted efforts by all segments of society. Sheikh Rashid expressed thanks and appreciation to the General Director of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electricity, rather Electronic Security, for their efforts in facing and reducing corruption crimes in the context of cooperation and effective partnership between the legislative, judicial and executive bodies. On his part, the Director General of the General Director of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security, Colonel Bassem Al Miraj, affirmed that the success of the Directorate's efforts are a result of the wise guidance of the Interior Minister to the continuous support and facilitation of applying an effective policy that contributes to detecting corruption. The work of the university students who won in the competition for best informational material to promote awareness of integrity and countering corruption was reviewed. The Interior Minister honored the winners, the sponsors and contributors in the National Anti-Corruption Campaign. Bahrain's Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirms the necessity that the international community assumes its responsibility towards the humanitarian tragedy of the Syrian people, namely in Aleppo. The ministry also urges the cessation of all fighting and violence. The ministry reiterates the kingdom's stance that calls on the importance of coordinating international efforts, especially from the countries that have an influence in Syria, to stop the tragedy, protect civilians, and ensure means of humanitarian aid delivery in order to reach a peaceful political solution based on Geneva 1. Bahrain also stresses the importance of preserving Syria's unity and the remaining government institutions to guarantee a secure and stable life for the Syrians and their country.